This agri-minute again is targeted to the combine operators out there. As you're harvesting in the fall, there's some things that you can do from a data collection standpoint that helps answer a lot of questions when we're sitting down and going through yield maps. And when we're talking about harvesting corn, again, it's paying attention to the monitor, watching the maps being built. And when you see a area in the field that has a drastic drop in yield, something of concern, then is to right then and there is a time to collect data to help us answer what's going on. From the combine cab, of course, you can recognize plant height. You can recognize standability. Is the corn down in this area? If it is down, is it is the stalk breaking off at the ground? Is it breaking off under the ear? Where is it? Those types of notes say, hey, drop a pin here and this is what I'm seeing. That's going to help. Whip out your cameras, take some pictures. If you can't see it from the cab, that's when you want to stop that combine and go out there and first look for a stand count. So check the stand and the good yielding part of the field. Stretch out your tape, count the plants, count the ears, just get your ear count, and then do it in the poor part of the field. So if there's plants missing out there, then it's a situation where uh, there's probably nothing you can do to identify why they're missing, unless there's a varmint or something out there that has um, tore the corn out and you can see it. But you can say, hey, we had a 10,000 or 11,000 drop in stand, and that may go back to a number of different things, but at least when we're going through the maps, we'd realize it's, it's a stand count issue. Next, you do an ear count. So how does the ear count? And as those ears drop off, uh, we got plants out there, but we don't have ears on them, or uh, then you would make note of stalk size. So if there's 6,000 plants out here without an ear and they're a third less in diameter than the plants next to it, that's something that you would note because that would indicate an early season stress. If the stalks are normal, but the ear size varies quite a bit, that would be another thing to note. And that would help tell us what stress or when this stress took place out there. So we get out here and we find the stalks are similar in size, whether they're big or small and the stand is here, but there's a variation in that ear size. One thing maybe document is how many ears are upright versus how many ears are down. Now, depending on where you are in the harvest, they may all be down, but if you notice that in the good area, 80, 90% of them are up and only 10% down and maybe 50% are down, that's an indicator. You again, take a picture, mark that down, because we know the plants died prematurely compared to those other ones, and we can start to investigate some disease. Once we find the ears are here, then we want to see how well the ears are filling. So as we get out here and look at those ears, and we're going to compare those ears to the good part of the field. In this case, we can see there's a lot of tip blowed off. These are yellow, uh, shriveled up in size. This is a late stress. This would be a stress that happened after pollination, well into milk stage. You were in the last maybe two weeks of grain fill when the stress took this away from the plant. So that would make a difference in how we would diagnose where this yield went. Compare that to maybe a different zone where the ear is just small overall, not a lot of tip blowback, but a truncated cob and all and a truncated in girth. This is an earlier stress. Matter of fact, this stress was pre-pollination. So your manager say, well, the stress in this area happened before pollination, maybe here at after pollination, which could be disease, nitrogen, but it eliminates some of the things that we're looking for. One thing you can do is go in here and just collect a thousandth of an acre of ears, throw them in a bag, do that in the good part as well, and bring them into the shop and lay them out and see how do these ears differ. If the population's the same, that yield drop's gonna be in kernel count and it's gonna be in kernel size or a combination of those two together. And knowing that helps us when we're trying to decide what kind of management decisions would we change to get this ear back to normal. This time of year, we're kind of focusing on harvesting. That's our number one priority is to get this crop out and get it in the bin. But it's also time to take stock of things like the winter annuals, especially for uh, the no-till, strip-till programs. These winter annuals are off and running and more coming. So we think about our winter burndown programs, especially if we want to plant soybeans early and we don't want to be planting in a mat of chickweed and henbit and, and mare's tail. So again, as you survey these fields through harvest realizing that uh, especially those that have been no-till the longest are going to have the heaviest pressure. If we're doing tillage of course tillage is going to take care of this but if we're not doing tillage and we're going to come back and no-till into this next spring now's the time to put yourself together a, a 
burn down program to come out here and clean this up. And it doesn't have to be that elaborate or that expensive of a program. Usually guys are running just a mixture of 2,4-D and a dicamba type product to clean most of this up. But again, we got to get on top of it. We got to get this done uh, as we look at November coming at us uh, as we finish up this harvest so we don't have to fight this problem next spring.